All right, so good morning, everyone. My name is Harold Hughes. I'm the founder and CEO of Bandwagon from Greenville, South Carolina. But before that, I'm a sports fan and a music fan and a performing arts fan. And like most of my team, we really care about being in the venue. There's just something about being a fan, right? Seeing that game-winning touchdown, hearing the encore as your favorite band comes back on stage, there's just nothing like being there. However, live events are under attack. Fans are craving unique experiences that cater to their personal desires and the opportunities to connect with one another, regardless of their background. I think about my time growing up as a first-generation American to Jamaican parents and how sports really unified people of color, people of different religion, people of different socioeconomic statuses because we were on the same playing field. We truly believe that fanhood, when you're in the live event, does the same thing. We love how we can connect people together. However, that's really difficult to do when you don't know who's in the venue. As sports organizations, festivals, and every other type of event organizer works to try and customize and curate that experience, we want to focus on building something that helps them do that. So today, for the first time ever, we'd like to introduce Aura. Aura is built by Bandwagon to help event organizers know who is in the venue and connect with them deeply, understand the insights that are going to get them to come back again and again, and provide unique and curated products and services to make that experience a once-in-a-lifetime one. So the former CEO of Ticketmaster, Nathan Hubbard, said this, and I think it made so much sense. We have to know everything about 100 people going on an airplane, but we don't when there's 100,000 people going into a stadium. So naturally, I'm sure that your mind goes to safety and you think about that, but let's look at the larger application. By knowing who's inside the venue, you're able to curate that experience. You're able to offer the right products and services. You're able to do engagement with marketing. And so that's what we really want to focus on, is fan identity at the unit level and being able to create macro solutions. So the current ticket process is pretty straightforward, as most of you all here probably had to register or buy a ticket to some event that you've been to recently. Fans go to a website, they put in their information, they receive their, informa their tickets. For events that they can't make it to, fans often are able to resell their tickets on the secondary market. From there, the fan ends up attending. The challenge is that fans are buying tickets on marketplaces that have no idea if these tickets are real which means that the event organizers have no idea who's actually showing up. We've talked with NFL teams, Major League Baseball, performing arts, and hearing identity information where teams know less than 4% of who's in the venue on the day of the event. So when you think about all those cheesy during the event marketing activities, or when you think about all that spam text messaging and emailing that you're getting, it's because they don't even know that you're there or what you like. So the current ecosystem is extremely fragmented. If you think about the industry players, Ticketmaster, StubHub, SeatGeek, Vivid Seats, all of these folks have built an incredible business on building a platform around their product, distributing tickets. The challenge is, is that in most cases, they're not connected. They don't talk to each other, which means a ticket can start on one ticket marketplace and move into another seamlessly without anyone knowing the wiser, which creates a challenge for actually knowing who's in the venue. Introducing our network that's powered by Aura, that network is actually connected. So now, ticket companies are able to check not only the authenticity of these tickets, but the event organizers are able to know who's in the venue and how the demographics of their stadium change day after day as tickets change hands. So why blockchain? Which I wanna go ahead and get in front of because that's the number one question everyone thinks as they do this. The challenge right now is that each of these ticket marketplaces and each of these venues and each of these stakeholders has their own unique database, has their own system, and they have their own customer information. And for us, we wanted to make sure all of that stayed intact. So with our blockchain solution, all of these business rules and logic that's set forth are able to stay in place, meaning you don't have to change your architecture, you don't have to change your customer flow, but by participating in our blockchain network, you're able to contribute to the blockchain and have your information be more rich. So that allows us to have a more safe, simple and secure platform. Our ideal partners are event organizers like sports organizations, festivals, concert artists, as well as ticket companies. So you think about the initial ticket that's created as well as the secondary market and brokers and aggregators as well. 
Lastly, we think that the next level of this activation is really going to focus on live event stakeholders. So who are those folks? Those are concessions, merchandisers, different people who are gaining fan insights on who's in the venue, the activities they're taking place in, and what means the most to fans. Our revenue model is really straightforward. We charge a licensing fee uh, directly to each event organizer, and that ranges from $10,000 to $100,000 based on the unit volume of the amount of tickets that they're transacting. Our partners today are some of the most well-known industry uh, leaders, whether you're a national champion, uh, Clemson University, my alma mater, uh, IVM and Columbia University, which we're thankful for their partnership and them hosting us for the Accelerator, as well as most recently the University of Texas as we're working with their team to look at tokenization. Uh, there you go, we got my friends here from Austin, uh, looking at tokenization uh, as it relates to fanhood. So when we think about the future, I wanna come up with a new version of SaaS. I think about stadium as a service, where stadiums are actually the platform on which event organizers are able to deliver value to their fans. And so that's what we want to build. And as Marie mentioned earlier, we're focused on connecting the dots. And so when you see with our new branding with Aura, that that's really what we're focused on. We're really trying to connect the dots, whether you start from buying the ticket to engaging inside that venue and everything in between. So today we're looking for anchor members. And these anchor members, we're expecting to have the most innovative leaders in your respective space, industry, leagues, to understand how we can, un how we can unpack this and create the governing rules that are really going to help make the network participation robust. As, as David said earlier, we're looking for transaction volume. And we really understand that the most important piece of that is having key players at the table early as we set those rules in place. So that is our presentation for today. I'm really excited about what we're doing. I'm happy to be greeting you all from Greenville, South Carolina, and talking to you about the future of fan identity as it relates to making uh, better visibility into who's inside venues everywhere. Thank you. Thank you, Harold. We've got about three minutes for questions. Um, so I'm gonna kick it off with one that I know we've talked about in the past, which is, you barely say the word blockchain in your presentation. And I know you don't say that a lot when you're talking to customers. Like, right. do you need to tell people that it's blockchain? We don't think that you should, um, primarily in the fact that uh, blockchain is an infrastructure level solution. And so uh, at the same way that folks don't tell you that they're at websites powered by Amazon, uh, we expect that the solution B should be able to take care of itself. And so we want to be an enabling partner. We want to be a quiet company that's in the background that's somehow worth a billion dollars. And, and we really are focused on that. And so that's why we, we make sure to focus on the solutions that we enable. Oh, you're stealthy. Stealthy. You're not out there trying to get your valuation up with nope. the blockchain. Okay. Delivering. Building a real business and delivering. That's novel. Questions from the audience? Questions. Sorry. Great, right. thanks Harold. Uh, just a quick one, could you talk a little bit more about, I know you mentioned Stadium as a service, but could you just talk about once you, know, you guys are scaled up in a few years, how you anticipate the sizing of the different kind of revenue opportunities? Is it kind of more on a venue by venue basis or are you trying to get in with some of the organizations that have multiple geographies? How do you think about that? You know, licensing versus kind of ad hoc revenues per event, thank you. And can thanks. you say who you are? Oh, sorry, uh, Evan Fung. Thank you, Evan. I appreciate that. Uh, so we started out primarily starting with the platform. We do think at scale we will be charging ticket companies a transaction fee to validate every ticket. So you can imagine from an example standpoint, if a ticket is created in Ticketmaster's ecosystem and then now all of a sudden that ticket's listed in StubHub's ecosystem, StubHub doesn't know where that ticket came from or any information. So all of a sudden, these two tickets are now listed there. So we'd want to be able to charge a transaction fee, call it five cents, 10 cents, 20 cents, to where each ticket marketplace can say, hey, these two tickets just showed up on our website. Are they real? And that checks the blockchain and says, yep, they were authenticated and created and minted on this day. And they say, okay, fantastic. Um, is this person or this entity, because it's obviously encrypted, the owner of that ticket? Yes, we see that and it's correct here. Okay, lastly, are there any restrictions on its ability to be moved, whether resold or price fixing or any of that stuff? Okay, all of that is tied in at the asset level. So we see the opportunity to charge a transaction volume from there. And with Aura, we're actually looking at building into this more products and services. Um, our second customer was actually an international film festival in Johannesburg. We worked with Kwaku Mandela and they were really trying to figure out audience insights. So once we can tell you who's in the venue, now we're able to work with some 
some of the Facebook Pixel product to tell you information about them, brands that they prefer, and so on. And so as of March 1st, we actually just opened up our round, and so we're actively seeking investments. Uh, anyone that's interested in learning more about us and Bandwagon and what we're building as the clock counts down to zero, uh, please find me or any of my awesome team members in the back with the black Aura shirts. We appreciate it. Thank you for everyone that's come out, and uh, we look forward to talking with all of you soon. Thank, Thank you, you, Harold. You.